Welcome to a new episode of Lucy's Arcane Vault. In today's episode I am going to give an upgrade to my knitting basket. So my old knitting basket had a lining uh, which was rather flimsy and floral and as I was knitting all my black and black and white projects, it was bugging me <laughs> to look at this flimsy thing. And I really needed something more appropriate for my current projects. So here you can see my current basket lining, which is really floral and frilly <laughs> with my black and white projects and Hecate came to say hello. So here I'm emptying the basket, you can see some of my black and white projects and some crochet trims and in the pockets I have notions. Down in the corner is Sage assisting, she left now. And here's the view of the lining. I still might use this for spring and summer. And here are my fabrics for this project. I have some quilting cottons that are nice and sturdy. and some trims and then I have all kinds of offcuts of lace fabrics and this one is stretchy satin actually but really nice print so here I'm pinning the bottom of the basket, an oval shape for that, since my basket is oval rather than square. And here are all the pieces I need. And I have marked the front pocket. I am using this tear away stabilizer, which I prefer for most of my machine embroidery. And I am going to mark the embroidery hoop placement into it. Uh, my fabric is smaller than it should be since I am using these remnants. So I will be using this uh, temporary adhesive spray to secure the fabric onto the stabilizer. And this is a nice uh, jacquard fabric that I used for some Victorian gowns. And I have marked the middle plus, which helps me with this grid. And this is how you secure the hoop into the embroidery arm lock it in place and then just press the button 
On the screen you can see I have the dimensions and thread changes. Well, this one doesn't have any thread changes since it is one color, but uh, approximate duration of the embroidery. And I have my machine set to the slowest speed to preserve the machine so that it would last me longer. So this is not sped at all. The actual speed. So the embroidery arm is moving the hoop and the needle just goes up and down and that's how the embroidery is formed. Here is another angle where you can see the motion. And basically you are not needed to supervise this, so I am knitting while I'm checking that no thread gets caught accidentally. Oh, and this design is purchased from Urban Threads. I will leave the information in the description below. And here is Dotty checking the process. With pets, you want to be careful that the cat doesn't uh, intervene with the embroidery arm because that can mess the machine really. <laughs> So it's better if they stay clear of the embroidery arm. And here is the design almost finished. And here's what it looks like from the wrong side. And now I'm just going to tear away the stabilizer. And this is the second design. This one is from embroidery library some finishing touches on that then for the third pocket I drew my cello and I am going to hand embroider it to transferring this I'm using um, Derwent tinted charcoal in white I mean any color pencil would work this one just works a little better and it brushes away so the lines won't be visible just freehanding the details
and here I'm embroidering the outlines of the fingerboard um, using backstitch for this and my thread is this polyester embroidery thread uh, I chose this thread to match the machine embroidery designs it's nice and shiny but it does tangle a lot Hand embroidery is actually one of the first crafts that I learned as a small child, my grandmother taught me. I was embroidering these Walt Disney characters and animals, of course. Now for the F holes, I am using satin stitch. do this to the thread a lot since it's so tangly oh you can see the thread in the background And I have sewn myself to it. That happens a lot. And for strings I chose a different color. This is steel gray to make them pop out. I mean if I were working with um, let's say moline thread that has six strands, I would be able to do the strings in different thicknesses, which would be pretty cool. Not in this one, sadly. I still thought it needed something more, so I am embroidering a second line of the outline of the cello to give it more detail.
And for my fourth pocket, I am going to do this kind of crazy quilting patchwork pocket where I'm using the smallest scraps that I have and I'm just using scissors to press the seams so that I don't have to get up all the time since these are such a small pieces. And I mean, you can do these pockets, embroider them or embellish them in any way you like. Or leave them plain, for that matter. On my previous lining, I think I just did a uh, cross, an X cross with um, Rick Rack ribbon as embellishment. Trimming the excess fabric. And there is my pocket. So I am taking the back piece and wadding and sandwiching the wadding in between. This is a polyester wadding and I have done it for all the pocket pieces and stitched them around and now it's time to embellish the fourth pocket so I decided to use some sequins and beads and a little bit of embroidery for this pocket and I am attaching sequins one by one with back stitch regular sewing thread and sewing needle you can see in the background I have the beading needles that are very thin and long they can fit through small beads rather easily But for sequins, I'm using just a regular sewing needle. These are holographic silver sequins. Nice and shiny. So the placement goes onto the seams. I'm basically hiding the seams with sequins and beads and embroidery. There are some silver regular silver sequins and now some cream sequins then the beads well these <laughs> luckily had a bigger hole so i didn't have to use the beading needles 
I, whenever I can, I try not to use them since they are so thin and they break easily. Uh, I am also using the backstitch. I thread like five beads at a time and then come back through two or three beads with the backstitch. These are tiny seed beads, glass, and some are plastic and cream and iridescent colors. And I am being careful not to put any beads into the seam allowances because I will be stitching uh, with the machine through it and it would be a nasty thread break and needle break if I hit the glass bead with the needle. And then I'm adding some bigger black glass beads into the lace portion kind of in a V shape like so and the last thing is embroidery stitch onto this black fabric um, I'm using chain stitch to enhance the borders. And here is the finished fourth pocket. And from the back you can see that I have a lot of threads that the notions could get caught in. So I am going to add another backing fabric so that it will be smooth. And again stitch around, baste it in place. And here is Dottie and Rosemary helping with the pockets. So now I'm going to bind the edges with bias binding. I am pinning it to the top of the front pocket pieces. And here I have sewn it. going to turn around the raw edge and encase it and pinning it in place making sure I catch the loose side of it on the back And I will be stitching in the ditch, so it will be invisible from front and it will catch the loose end in the back.
and I still thought it needed something so I am adding this lace onto two pockets to give it more interest and now it's time to assemble the pockets so I'm measuring five centimeters and adding these tapes five centimeters from the top these tapes will be used later to secure the pockets together around the handle of the basket and now I'm pinning the bias binding around the pocket but not on top of the pocket it will be turned around as previously and the tape needs to be loose so when that has been sewn, I can trim the excess fabric and turn the bias binding around. Pin it in place and stitch in the ditch as previously. It's important to not to catch the loose end of the tape <laughs> in the other side of the binding. So as you see, I pulled it away. So I got the idea that I will make a new lining in black and white inspired by Wednesday Adams and her colorway and um, then I got idea wait a second that basket would look so great if it were black so here you can see the basket in its natural color and it really has the oval shape and oval bottom so we used this stain black stain for the handle because that is the part that is going to be mostly visible underneath the lining and my husband kindly agreed to spray paint this basket for me while I was behind the camera filming So here is the basket with two coats of spray paint and it was very matte and I hoped for a glossy finish so the glossy varnish was added. And you can see now it's all glossy and shiny the way I like it. So this is how the basket turned out. As you can see it's very shiny which is exactly what I hoped for. And now all that is left to do is to move in. So this is going to be the sides of the lining I am pinning it together to form a tube and these striped pieces are going to be ruffles so here I'm turning three edges of the ruffles in turning them twice
and adding some trim onto the edge so it is more decorative. I'm using a longer stitch length for this, four millimeter length. And then I'm measuring the bottom oval length and I am going to hand gather the bottom of the tube and that is going to be sewn onto the oval. Mm, I prefer hand gathering since it's more adjustable, the gathers with the machine but you can do it either way whatever you prefer here I'm pinning it in place and sewing So then I'm marking five centimeters apart. That is the space of my uh, handle and pinning the pockets right sides together and same thing on the other side. And uh, the tapes need to match in the middle because these are going to be tied together. And then I have gathered the ruffles on the short sides and now pinning them in place. And stitching everything in one go. And I am going to attach the short side of the ruffle into the pocket so that it lays nice and smoothly. And here is what the finished lining of the basket looks like. And now we are going to set it in. So it really just goes down and these pockets will come out of the basket on both sides. And I will tie the ties and it will secure it in place.
time with my knitting and all the notions and everything that I need. They have been for the time being in my other knitting bag. I even have a black and white measuring tape that is going to go into the pocket and scissors and stitch markers. Some more stitch markers. Pens, I always need pens to make notes of the adjustments thread cutter and some buttons and then I have this lovely tatted Heart, which is filled with lavender which is supposed to repel moths which is a good thing when you're working with wool and silk so I'm going to attach it on top Here finished pieces of a jacket. I still need to make sleeves. And it will have this lace frilly color in white. finished Wednesday find basket. The cello is my favorite, not gonna lie. If you liked today's episode, please hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of the future episodes. And I will be back soon with more historical inspired sewing and crafting. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and blessed be.